Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Burn In's Corn Dogs. Yep, you heard it right. Brisket burn ins turned into a corn dog. It's maybe the most epic state fair like food that you'll ever experience. So over the top. And while I thought it was a really fun gimmick, when I actually got into testing it and then tasting it, it's incredible. Let's get into it. Now, in order to make burn ins, we need to get to the point muscle where the burn ins come from. This is a whole brisket, so it's got the point muscle up here, but it's also got the flat muscle where your slices come from down here. Uh, it's kind of hard to find a point just by itself to purchase one. So we'll go ahead and walk through the process of separating these out. So we'll start by taking some of this fat off the top of the point meat. Uh, that's, we really don't need all that fat that sits on top of it. And it's gonna make it a lot easier to find how to separate these if we can expose the meat. I do know from doing this a few times that once we work our way down here, it's gonna thin out this right around this mark probably would be my guess. And uh, we'll start to peel this back to separate these. All right, so we can see the big vein of fat that runs in between the two muscles comes around right here. This is gonna be the bottom, the thinnest part of our, uh, our point muscle. So we're just gonna slice in here to get underneath it. Don't worry, it's so thin that if you take a little off that you weren't supposed to, it's gonna be fine. Probably gonna trim that edge up anyway. So now I can kind of get my fingers underneath there and start to get into that area in between the two muscles, which is where we want to keep our knife from here on out. See that red right down there? We can see a little bit of that flat coming through, so I know not to go any deeper. I feel like getting this cut started and then the final cut when you make the final separation, those are the two most intimidating ones, uh, but it's just a matter of doing this again and again and getting comfortable with it. You kind of lift this up, let the weight of the brisket itself do the cutting. I'm just lightly slicing through these strands that go up and down. So we peeled this back till we almost are ready to do our last bit of cutting here. And the good news is from the side, you can really see where the white is. So you can just kind of follow that even when it gets a little bit thicker and a little bit more difficult to tell where to make that cut. But we are almost there. Stay out of the red. There we go. Now they're separated. We just got to get this side cleaned up to look like this side. First of all, these paper thin edges are just gonna burn up when we smoke them anyway, so you can slice that off and add it to your burger grind or sausage grind. And then you're gonna have some sections of hard fat that we wanna get completely out of there. Just gonna cut down until I see red and then level off. We got this point fully cleaned up now, and it's, it's funny how much variety there is and how, how different these can be uh, shaped and sized. This is a pretty wide point, and it's also pretty even. Like most of the time there's a much larger uh, hump here that I would go ahead and butterfly out, but being that that's a pretty good thickness and pretty even to the opposite side, I think we're just gonna let it ride. So let's go ahead and get this seasoned up now. We're gonna start with a little mustard binder, our Chili Slinger Fatali mustard. Got a little kick to it. And then for our seasoning today, we're using the Plowboys Bovine Bold. Just a great all around barbecue beef rub. Nice balance of savory and sweet. All right, evenly seasoned up. Let's just let this sit until that rub looks wet on the surface. Today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS480 pellet grill. In fact, I've been cooking on the pellet grill all night long. So I had a brisket go on at about 10 p.m. last night, uh, cooked for about nine hours at 190 degrees, which brought us up to about 165 on the internal. You're gonna see me wrap that brisket right after we throw this one on. So that's kind of become my favorite technique for cooking these briskets, especially when we're shooting videos is 
Uh, you throw your brisket on, but when you go to bed at 190, and it really helps, uh, one, with timing, but two, with that smoke profile. All night long at 190, plenty of smoke. Now this is our brisket that's been on overnight. It's been smoking at 190 all night. It's sitting at about 165 on the internal after a good nine to 10 hours. Uh, and you know, we've got great color on here. We've got really nice bark form. So we're gonna expedite this by wrapping it in foil. No need to add anything extra. Just throw it on a couple sheets of foil and wrap it real tight. Stick our probe back in here. And we're gonna keep on cooking this. Now with the temp up at about 250 until it reaches an internal of about 205. Maybe a little bit lower, 200 to 205, but really we'll be looking for tenderness. Our point's been wrapped for about an hour now. We've been checking the doneness. We're sitting just over 200 in that 200 to 205 range, but more importantly, probing really tender. So we're ready to cube this up and sauce it now. Well, the point's had about 20 minutes of rest time now. We're gonna slice it into cubes, about one inch cubes. Slicing really easy. Oh dang, look how juicy that is. Looks good. Get a little taste before we sauce them. Mm. Great smoke profile on it, thanks to that all night smoke. This has got a little bit of chew to it, maybe a little bit more than I normally would do for burn ins, but because I'm also going to fry it in a little bit, you know, I don't want them falling apart and not able to hold on to the skewer. Um, so we're gonna try and hit that sweet spot in between as we finish up the cook with some sauce. So back in the foil now, it's okay to throw it in with that uh, rendered out fat and some of the juices. We're gonna toss it into all of that. And then we're gonna hit this with a little barbecue sauce. We got the Blues Hog Raspberry Chipotle. Fantastic sauce for burn-ins. I love the, the fruit and the smoky chili in there. And then we're gonna hit it with a little honey for the shine as well. Give it a good toss. I'm gonna get these fully coated. Kind of spread them out into a single layer and then back onto the smoker with that sauce to tack up and for these little nuggets to get just even a little bit more tender. All right, let's let it go. Burn-ins have been back on for about, oh, 30, 40 minutes now, and they're looking really good. That sauce is all tacked up on the surface. Let's pull these out of here. All right, let's put together some of our corn dog batter. We're gonna start with a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna add to that a cup and a half of our yellow cornmeal. And we've got our leaveners. A teaspoon and a half of baking powder and a half teaspoon of baking soda. I'm gonna season this up with a couple tablespoons of that same bovine bold that we used on our brisket. And now for the liquids. We've got a cup each of buttermilk, cream corn, just out of a can, and a fairly generic beer. This one happens to be Yingling Lager. And you're welcome to replace the beer with water if you just don't like that flavor. Uh, just know that the alcohol will cook out when we fry the corn dogs. I love the texture in this batter from that, the little bits of corn that are in there. It's a really nice little burst of corn flavor. So we're gonna load this into a marinade shaker because uh, this is probably the most effective way, like vessel as far as getting your corn dog covered because we can dip right down into it. 
All right, so let's load up the skewers with our burn ends now. Cooled down just a little bit. Hopefully that'll help them to hold on a little bit. Probably gonna go about mm, four to five deep on these. We'll cover that pointy tip with the last one. There's one serving right there. We're going to do our frying on the side burner of the Napoleon Phantom 500 gas grill just to make it easy and so we don't have to have all that grease and stuff splattering inside. Now I've got about a gallon of vegetable oil in my Dutch oven and it's preheated to about 375 to 400 right now. We're going to do this live dip and go. A nice coating on there and drop it. You're going to want to float a little bit so you're going to have to kind of hold them down or weigh them down one on top of the other. Probably easiest to just do a couple at a time. That beer batter smells good. Probably should throw on a some cottons and nitriles to keep from the popping hot oil getting in the fingers. We'll do that for the next round. So just kind of slowly rotating these and frying them until they're golden brown. First one's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take that one off. Got burn ins popping out the top. That's all right. Last one's going down now. After the second batch, took a little break to let the oil temperature recover, come back up to like 375, 380. Uh, and then just topping this off as we go with a little bit more from the bowl. This will definitely get you a good 12 or so of these corn dogs if you end up going, going that hard. All right, since we're going big, we're going all the way big, covering it in powdered sugar to finish, and then some more of that raspberry chipotle barbecue sauce. Boom. State Fair Beauty. Moment of truth. <laughs> My gosh. It's like they wrapped a funnel cake around burn ends. Look how juicy the burn ends still are. Mmm. Texture is incredible. Such wonderful crunch on the outside, but it's like creamy melt in your mouth goodness on the inside. Great balance of sweet and salt. I mean, this is unfairly good, to be honest with you. You gotta stop yourself at some point though. Not right now, later. Mm. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.